In this video, I'm going to run through a demonstration of Mosaic software by drawing a kitchen that will showcase the various features and functionality of the software. The first step will enter a new job name and click OK. Mosaic is designed to work from the left of the screen to the right of the screen in these simple tab forms to help you identify which piece of information you should fill out next. So we're going to start on the job page and fill in some customer details. Once you have filled out the job information, you can progress onto the settings page. The left hand side of the settings page will show you a live preview of the options that you've configured on the right hand side of the settings page. The right hand side of the settings page is broken down into various tabs across the top. Start from the left and work your way across to the right. For this particular job, I'm going to change my door styles. So I'll click on the base door symbol and then go and pick the door style that I wish to use. Once you've selected the door style, click OK. This page allows us to select the various tooling that you might want to use to machine your doors. You can use the standard tooling options that you've configured or overwrite them if this job happens to be different from your standard. Notice now as I've selected that new door style, I can see that live in the preview over on the left hand side. I'll continue on to fill out the various other choices on this screen. Once you're happy with your selections, you can move on to the next tab. Continue to work your way across the different tabs until you've filled out all the information that is applicable for this job. To speed up future jobs, you can use the template functionality to save away pre-configured groups of settings. Now let's move on to the Room tab. The first bit of information that you want to fill out on the Room tab is the height and depth information of the project. Once you're happy with your heights and depths, you can move on to the Walls tab. For this option, I'm going to press draw walls and start with my first wall. I simply click my starting position, move the cursor in the direction I wish to draw the wall and type in the size. You can continue on from that point around your room. Once you've finished drawing walls, simply press escape on the keyboard. Once you've drawn the walls, you'll notice more options appear on the ribbon toolbar at the top. You'll see that after walls, we've got various other choices. These give us various options to insert different items into the job. This kitchen design requires an island, so I'm going to choose that I want an island and that it's a double-sided island. I'm going to click Add Island. I can then go ahead and click on the island. I can set the size of the island on the left. and again choose which way I want that to stretch. I can right click on the island and choose to position it within the space of the room. So I could say that from wall number two, it needs to be 2.5 meters. There are various other choices available up the top, things like adding T walls, windows, sinks, dishwashers, fridges, etc. In this example, I'm going to add a sink and I want that to be on wall number four. However, I want it to be on the other side of wall number four. I can enter the size of my sink, enter the size of the sink cabinet, and the position of the sink. 
If I'd like to center it on the wall, I can click the option here, which will center it directly on that wall. I'm then going to choose that I'd like to place a dishwasher on the right hand side of that sink. I can then click on the dishwasher and specify its sizes. I'm then going to move along to the fridge tab and add a fridge. My fridge is 970 wide by 1820 high and it needs to start 387 off the left wall. This job doesn't have a freestanding range or oven, so I'm going to leave that option and move along. You can use the hood feature to draw in a range hood on a specific location. I'm going to use the door option and to put a door opening on wall number three. I'm going to click add wall, choose wall number three, choose that it's an opening and specify the size of my opening. I'm going to place that 850 from the left hand wall. Once you're satisfied with laying out the various room items, you can move along to products. Using the product page, we can start laying out the cabinetry in the room. I'm going to zoom in to make it clearer and easier to start drawing the joinery. The first thing I require is a filler panel on edge against this wall. So I'm going to browse down to my tall cabinets, open up tall fillers, and drag that out and drop that onto the wall. To add my end panel, I'm going to navigate over to Tall End Panels, expand the tree, and select Tall Left End Panel to Floor. Drag that out and drop that into place. I can pick it up and move it using this green arrow and drag it until it snaps against the item that I'd like to move it to. Alternatively, I can come down to the clearances and enter the exact distance that I'd like that item to be away from the fridge. The next item that I'll insert will be a tall one door cabinet in the available space. To do that, I'm going to branch open tall standard cabinets, select tall cabinet one door and drag that into place. You'll notice that the item is automatically resized to fill the required space. I would like to reverse the hinge direction so the hinge opens from the wall side. I'm going to click on that cabinet, right click and choose rehinge. Now I would like my filler panel to come out to meet the doors. So I'm going to click on that option there and simply increase the depth so it comes out to meet my doors. Now I require another end panel on the other side of the fridge. So I'm going to go back to end panels and in this case I'm going to choose a tall right end panel and drag that out, place that next to the fridge and change my clearance to 5mm. By holding down the scroll wheel on the mouse, you're able to move the page across to make it easier to see where you're working on next. The next item that I require is a tall two-door pantry. So I'm going to select tall cabinet two doors, drag that out and place that next to the panel. The size that I need is one meter. Now you can choose to either work in plan view or elevation view. To navigate to the elevation view, simply click on the wall that you'd like to view and then go across and click on the elevation button or use the shortcut Control plus Shift plus E. Okay, between the two panels and above the fridge, I'm going to put a cabinet in. The cabinet that I'm going to use is one that's been designed as a top hinged cabinet. I have one in my library under wall standard cabinets, Hayfley free flap wall cabinet. I can click on that and drag that out and drop that into place. I'll have a pop-up here that says, do you want to adjust the cabinet height so it fits over the fridge? Simply click enter or yes to allow that to happen. I can then click on my green arrow and stretch my cabinet until it fills the required space. Now currently this cabinet is only 350 mil deep and it is against the wall. If you would like to change the depth of the cabinet, 
You can do that by clicking in there and changing the depth. If you'd like to move it off the wall, you can do that by clicking in Outset and entering the distance between the wall and the back of the cabinet. You can use these fields as a calculator. So I'm going to enter in my pantry depth of 580 and minus off the fridge depth of 450 and press tab. And that has resulted in a size of 130 mil. To check that I've got it in the right position, the best option now is to view this in either plan view or 3D view. So to go back to plan view, I can go across and click on the plan view icon. And then I can see that I've got the cabinets lined up and everything looks right. To check this in 3D view, you can simply navigate over to the 3D button, click that, and it opens up a 3D view of the room. So I can scroll across, zoom in, and orbit around. I can expand to full screen, or minimize back down to a separate window. So let's go back to elevation and continue on with our design. Next to the two door pantry, I'm going to have two oven cabinets that are 600 wide each. So the oven is in a tower. However, with this job, I need finger pool cabinets below the ovens. So the way I'm going to go about that is navigate across to my library and I'm going to change the library to a finger pool library that I've constructed. I'm going to navigate down to base cabinet with three drawers, drag that out and place that next to the pantry. The first thing I'm going to do is double click on that cabinet to take me into the cabinet editor. Let's have a closer look at this product by going to view product. I can go and look at this from various perspectives to see what type of product we're, we are using. I can expand to full view, navigate around, and choose different fields of view. The first thing I want to do here is go to the face view and change my draw front heights. So for this particular job, I need my draw front heights to be 180 by 180. The bottom draw is going to be the remainder. Now I need to go to the parameters tab and change the split heights to match my draw front heights. That will ensure that all the shadow line rails move to be in the correct position according to the door. The next thing I'm going to do is choose the drawers that I'd like to use. So I'll navigate back to the face tab, click on my first draw front and then click overrides. I'm then going to drop this down and I'm going to select a Blum Legra box M height 500 and then click OK. I'm then going to go to the second drawer front, click Overrides, and choose a Lomlegra box M height 500. I'm going to check what's automatically assigned to my bottom drawer front, and that is also a Lomlegra box F500. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit OK. Now the next thing I need to do is I want to make sure that the this particular base cabinet finishes in line with my pantry. So I'm going to go across to the size tab and I'm going to change the depth to 580. That will ensure that my drawer fronts finish flush to the doors on the cabinet beside. Now that I'm happy with all those options, I can click OK to close. Then I'm going to right click on that option, choose copy, right click in the space next to it and choose paste. Next to all of that, I'm going to have a tall end panel that also runs to the floor. So I'm going to go back to my standard library Branch open tall end panels and select tall right end panel to the floor. Okay, above the two base cabinets, I'm going to build an overhead cabinet that also has a section for the oven. Now for this, I'm going to start with a standard wall two door cabinet. Drag that out and drop that into place. I'm going to change its size to 600 wide. The next thing I need to do is change its height. I can simply minus off the base cabinet height from the tall cabinet height to work out the correct size. So I can say 2400 minus my 870 and that equates to 1530. The next thing I'm going to need to do is change the depth of the cabinet to make sure that is also the same depth as the cupboard beside it. 
Now I need to edit this cabinet to make sure there's available space for the oven. So I'm going to double click on the product. I'm going to go to the face tab. And firstly, I'm going to click on the face and choose that I'd like to split that horizontally. In the bottom section, I'm going to click on the door and change my height to the available space that I would like for my oven. Now I'm going to enter a 600 oven. So I'm going to press 600 and then take away my bottom thickness. I'm then going to change the type from a door to an open section. For the area above the oven, I'm going to make that a pair of doors. So I'm going to go to type and choose pair. I'm then going to navigate to the interior tab. I'm going to click on the adjustable shelf and I'm going to make that a fixed shelf. I'm then going to make sure that fixed shelf is flushed on the bottom of the shelf to the split line that I added earlier. I'll then click in my available space above the shelf and I'm going to add four equal sections which will give me three adjustable shelves above that line. Now below that opening I can click in the oven area and then click inserts, navigate across to appliance inserts and select an oven that I would like to drop into that space. I'm going to drag my oven across and drop that in the opening. You can use the various fields on the right hand side with negative values to make sure that your oven overhangs the side of the cabinet by the material thickness. The same applies to the bottom. Let's take a closer look at this product. If you'd like to add another line of shelf holes to the back edge here, you can navigate to the shape, click on the back edge, choose adjust, and simply enable the shelf holes. Once you're satisfied with that cabinet, click OK to exit out. I need two of these, so I'm going to right click copy and paste that next to the original. Okay, now I'm going to pan across so I can work on this area here. The first thing I want to do is place some base cabinets down the bottom. Base cabinets are going to be the same as these ones over here, except I want three equal options. So I'm going to right click, copy one of them and paste it on the other side of the panel. The next thing I want to do is make sure I have a end panel at the end of the run here. So I'm going to go to base fillers and I'm going to choose a base edge filler. I'm going to drag that over and drop that at the end of the wall. You can move it across by either dragging it as we discussed earlier, or I can click this option here to choose to bump it across to the next available item. Now that I have that in place, I'm going to stretch this cabinet just to make sure it's taking up more than, the, more than a third of the available space. I'm going to copy that, paste it, and paste another one at the end. With all of the cabinets touching, I can hold down control on the keyboard, click on all three options, right click, and choose that I would like to equalize their widths. Okay, so next we're going to add in our wall cabinets. The first option I want to do here is navigate across and put a wall filler against the right hand wall. So I'm going to go to wall fillers. I'm going to choose a wall L shape filler, drag that out, place that on the wall, and then bump that across until it's against the edge of the wall. So I'm going to click Auto Fill. I'm going to leave it on Wall and Library Cabinets. Press OK, and then it's going to fill the wall with library cabinets. Note that that's working to specific sizes that you had set in your Auto Fill commands. So in my case, I only want three, three cabinets above there, so I'm going to delete two of them going to stretch one of them to be quite big and then right click select all options and equalize the widths okay like we did on the left hand side I'm going to go back to the plan view and check that my fillers have ended up flush to my cabinetry as that's what I'm going for in this particular design so I'm going to click on the base filler I'm going to change that depth to 580 which will bring it out flush to the doors 
I'm then going to click on my wall filler and I'm going to increase that to 370. Okay, the last thing I need to do on this back wall is put some bulkheads in place. So I'm going to go back to my elevation view. I'm going to navigate to wall bulkheads. I'm going to select that I'd like a wall bulkhead returned on the right. And I'm going to drag that out and drop that above the cabinets. I'm going to stretch that across all the way to the left. And for its size this way, I'm actually going to click on this end panel and I'm going to see what its position is off the left hand wall. I can copy that position, click on the bulkhead and then paste the same size on the bulkhead because I'd like it to step back basically at that same point there. Next thing I need to do is change the size to make sure I'm coming out to the size of my joinery. And then go back to 3D to see what I've created. So as you'll see now, we've got a bulkhead that is mitered on the corner and returned back around. So now I need another bulkhead at the depth of the overhead cabinet that runs across this length here. So let's pan across, go back to our library, select wall bulkhead straight, drag that out and drop that into place and then stretch it to fill up the space. That one is already set to the correct depth of the wall cabinets, so I'm going to leave it at that size. I'll go into 3D to confirm that everything looks the way I want it to look. Okay, let's go back to the plan view and we'll complete the drawing by filling out the island. Okay, for this island design, I'm going to use a finger pull option on the inside edge of the island. So I'm going to navigate back to Cabmate finger pull. I'm going to select a two door option, drag that out. I'm going to bump that against the dishwasher and say, yes, I want to align that with the sink. And I can stretch that then to the size I need or simply type in the available space. Okay, with my sink, I noticed that I need to change a few settings here. So I'm going to go ahead and change some of the values. I can change the overall height of the sink, the overall width, depth, and the distance that it is outset off the wall. I can make that a positive or a negative number. Notice if I type in a positive number, it moves forward. And if I type in a negative number, it moves backwards. So I need to get that to the correct position according to my cabinet. Okay, next to the two door sink cabinet, I'm going to put the three drawer option. Now I can either drag it out from my library or because I've already set one up and I want to match what I've done over here, I'm going to right click copy and then right click paste. I'm going to bump that against the sink cabinet and I'm going to change its depth to 560 for this run. The next thing I need to do is size this correctly. So I could start by dragging it all the way to the end of my wall, which is set the size at 1100. Now I know that I want to allow 40 mil for a waterfall end there. So I'm going to just type in minus 40 and then say, I want that to come off the left of the cabinet. Okay, with that done, the last option is to put a one door cabinet over here on the right hand side. So I'm going to drag that into place. Again, same concept, I can see that I've actually got 50 mil remaining. So I'm just going to simply say, I want to add 10 mil to the cabinet size. And I'd like to put a bar back panel on the other side of this island. So I'm going to navigate back to my standard library, I'm then going to go down and branch open uh, base end panels and select base bar back panel. Drag that out and drop that on the wall. I could stretch that all the way to the end of the wall Come down here and simply type in minus 80. Click enter and press that I want to take it off both sides. So now if we have a look at our job in 3D. We see that we've pretty much got most of it completed. However, we do need to put on bench tops. So let's do that next. Before we go ahead and enter the countertops, I would like to change the depth of these three cabinets to be slightly shallower 
than the remaining run because I'd like to make sure that my bench top ends up finishing in line with my end panel and my doors are set back. So I'm going to quickly change the depth of each of these items. Okay, now that I've done that, I can move across to the tops tab and then carry on with creating the countertops. Okay, so the easiest way to draw the tops in is to go across and press the auto build tops button. That's going to prompt you with a sink cutout perimeter option where you can enter the size of the sink cutout or the allowances around the sink. I'm going to press OK and now that has created the various bench tops. Everywhere where I've got base cabinets, it has put a bench top on top of that. Now in my particular case here, I don't want to have bench tops on top of these two cabinets because I've got wall cabinets directly above them. So I'm just going to right click on that and press delete. Now coming across to the island, I can click on my island bench top. First thing I need to do here is to change the overall size of the island. Now I want to make sure that I'm overlapping my front by 40 mil. I would like to overlap the back of the cabinets by 300 mil giving me a 900 mil deep bench top. Now on the left, I'm going to overhang by 40 mil and on the right by 40 millimeters as, as well. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit closer here so you can see how this is working out. And then on the sides here, I want a waterfall end on either side. So to do that, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose that I would like to edit the shape on the floor plan simply right click on the edge that I'd wish to place a waterfall end and click waterfall. I'm then going to navigate across and right click on the other side and also choose waterfall. I'm going to accept those edits, hit OK. And now I have a waterfall end on either side of my countertop. Okay, taking a quick look at the bench top over here on the back wall. I want to make sure, as I mentioned earlier, that that comes out to meet my panel here. So I'm going to simply click on that one and change my front overhang. Front overhangs can be set as a default in the top settings area. Okay, from that point, that pretty much completes the bench tops. Working across my tabs here, I could go and add in mouldings. Mouldings can be used to add things like crown mouldings or corners across the top of the ceiling, uh, or decorative kick faces, uh, or chair rails, various other things. You can choose that you want to automate them around the room. You can choose from a various library of different options. So for different uh, settings here, like I could go to the ceiling and choose various different ceiling moulds uh, and then draw them in place. For this particular design, I'm not going to use them. On the order tab here, I could add in additional information, like if there was additional pieces of material that are required to be cut, but I didn't want them to be designed in the drawing, I can add them here. Or if I didn't want to draw the job and I just want, wanted to use a spreadsheet style order and entry page, that's what this screen is exactly for. Um, moving across now, we can have a look at the pricing and cut list next, but just to to complete the drawing aspect of it, we're going to go back to our room page. Now my particular bar back panel here is constructed from a panelized back. So if I go to my shape and click on my shape, I'm using the panelized back section to create that part. So I would like that to have also the same V groove lines. So I'm going to go across to my settings page. I'm going to go to end panels and I'm going to change the panel backs to use the V-Grooves feature. Okay, now if I navigate back to my room and then go to 3D, you'll see that I now have V-Grooves on the bar back panel. If I'd like to change the color of this, I think I wanna go for a dark color to match my dark countertop. So everything on this side is dark and everything on that side is light. I'm going to go ahead and close out of there, select my panel, double click. I'm going to go to textures and then I'm going to change my base door texture to use a darker color.
Okay, that's now made the V grooves on the bar back panel very subtle. Okay, so the next logical step here would be to piece together your drawings to present them to a client. So I'm going to go ahead now and show you how to go about that. So I'm going to expand the 3D view to my full page here. Now it depends if you'd like this to be in uh, a color view or a hidden line view, either option's fine. So just simply select the view that you would like to use, get it in the position that you're happy with. And once you've got that all set, to something that you're quite satisfied with, you can then simply press save on the left hand side and give this view a name. So I'm gonna call this view one and press okay. I'm then going to orbit back around and get a view perspective looking through this opening here. Get that into a position that I'm satisfied with. Press save. And I'm gonna call this view two. Once you're happy with that, I'm going to close out of the 3D view. And then I'm going to navigate to file and select print and select multi-print. I'll expand this full page so we can see a bit closer what's going on. So you can have different title blocks set up on the page. I've currently got my page size set to A3 and I've got a few different items available here just showing me information about the job, what room heights I have selected, what door styles and hinges and drawers I'm using, what materials I've selected. I've got a section here for the client to sign off. All of this can be customized to suit your business. First thing I'm going to do is drag across the floor plan view. So I'm going to click on plans and select room one and then just drag that out and drop that onto the page. I can then click on that, press M for move and then drag that into the position that I'm happy with. You can scale this down and fit multiple items on a page if you prefer. So you can right click and choose scale. You can change the scale to something bigger which will give you a smaller image or you can make it resizable and then therefore it's not to scale, but you can stretch it to fit exactly where you want it. So again, I'm going to pick that up and move that across. I'm then going to go to my elevation view and I'm going to grab the elevation for wall number two, drag that out and drop that onto the screen. Same thing, if I'd like to apply the same scale, I can right click on that, choose scale and then choose the scale that I'm after. Click on the elevation, select M for move and then move that into position. Next, I'm going to go across to my wall number four and I'm going to select the, the back view of wall number four. Drag that out and place that on the screen. I'll do the same thing here. I'll scale this down. And move that to where I'm happy with. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get my 3D views and place them on the page, or at least one of them. So I'm going to go down to Live 3D Views, branch this open, select my view number one, drag that out and place that on the screen. Now with 3D views, you can click on them and expand them up to size using the blue arrows. So I can drag that out and get that to a position that I'm happy with and a size that looks correct on the page. I can go ahead and grab view number two and I'm going to drag that down and put this in this lower right hand corner. How you like to lay out this page is completely personal and up to you. You've got the option available to do as many pages as you like. So if you'd like to have all this available on separate pages, you just simply navigate across here and press add new page. And I'm going to call this page two or I could call it elevation or plan or 3D, depending on what I'm doing. Okay, in this example, I'll, I'll select something different. So let's maybe navigate down to items and lists. And I'm going to get a item list of that everything that is on the job for room number one. So this is just an item list broken down by cabinet name, width, height and depth and the cabinet number. So everything there is showing me exactly what I've got in this job. And you can do you can do things like uh, pull out cross sections of rooms. You can pull out cross sections or views of individual items. So if you're trying to show the detail, perhaps of uh, let's say one of these finger pull sections, 
you could simply drag that out and drop that onto the page. Right click, choose your scale. I'm going to make that resizable and just drag that up to be quite big. So there's no hard and fast rule of what you can, what you should do here. It's a personal preference as to what, how you'd like to lay this out. And there's various tools across the top that gives you control to really detail the shop plans to be exactly what you need. Once you're happy with them, you can print them or save them. And I'm going to press OK to return back to my drawing. OK, the next step that I'm going to look at is the pricing for this job. I'm going to drop down the template option and I'm going to select a template. The template that I'd like to use in this example is a material list. I'm going to press OK. Now my material lists are set to use the nesting optimizer to optimize the exact sheet quantity. Therefore it's going to figure out the correct sheet quantities available for each of my items. I can change the size of each of these fields and see an overall price of all the materials that I'm using in this project. There's many different ways to price and the pricing engine in Mosaic is very powerful. I won't go through all of them options now. However, you can rest assured that there is a pricing method to suit almost everyone. Moving on from pricing, we're going to go to our cut list. On the cut list page, I can see the overall cut list for all my parts for the white satin material. I could drop that down and select my HMR material. I can drop that down and filter to different types of parts or look at everything in one long list. I can choose to either display the finished size or the cut size of each item. Moving on from the cut list page, we can click optimize, which will take me through to the optimizer. Now I'm going to choose both of my materials here and press OK. And that's now going to load in a separate window, Mosaic Optimizer, where we can nest and export the G-code for these, this particular kitchen. So firstly, let's expand this page. I'm going to double check that I've got the correct sheet size loaded for each of my materials. So it's pulled through the two materials. Now I know I've got quite a long um, kitchen here, so I'm going to change this to 3610 for my overall length of my sheet size there. I'm going to go to the parts tab next. So just like the mosaic interface, you're working from the left to the right, keeping it very simple and easy. On the parts tab here, you can see all the individual items that we've, that we've uh, created for our white satin material. And then we can do the same for our 16 mil HMR. Now, even at this point, if you've decided that there's something you need to change, maybe you need to add an operation or delete an operation, you, you can simply click on the part and you can click edit part operations on the right hand side, which gets you into the part operation editor window. You can select a hole, move it, delete it, or add various other operations. I'm happy with everything that we've designed, so I'm not going to do that in this case. So I'm going to go across now to the optimize option. On the optimize tab, I can select my machine and tools that I'd like to use to optimize this, this kitchen. I'm going to go across now and I'm going to choose the option that I would like to sequence my flip side parts. That's for six face nesting first. And I'm going to batch all the materials together so I can optimize them all in one hit. I'm then going to press optimize, select all and hit okay. Now you can see how fast that's optimized. We've got 12 patterns for our white 16 mil HMR. And if I scroll across, we've got the last three sheets there, pattern 13, 14, and 15. So the arrows down the bottom help you navigate across. I could go to any one of these sheets, like just click on pattern number six, for example. That takes me into a closer view. I could even look at this sheet in 3D and open that up and I can see exactly how that's going to cut to make sure that nothing's going to overlap or hit each other, that everything's basically as I wanted it. So I'm going to close out of there now, return and press view all patterns. Over on the left hand side, I can see that I've got my white 16 mil HMR and my white satin materials. Now you can see on my white satin materials here that I've got pattern one, two, three, four, five and six. 
The green items are the items that require machining on both sides of the sheet. So Mosaic will take care of that by outputting G-code for both sides of the sheet, allowing the user to flip the sheet and machine it from both surfaces. Once I've had a look through there and I'm happy with all of those options, I'm going to go ahead and press generate G-code. I'm going to say I want to generate all the G-code for both of my materials in one hit. And I definitely want to generate the flipped sheet program, so I'm going to tick that option on. I'm then going to press OK. On the next screen here, it gives me the choice to add the squaring cut. And depending on the way I'd like to flip that, and that's completely dependent on your machine layout, I can choose the necessary option for where I want to trim the sheet. That way, when I've flipped it over and pushed it back against the pins, I'm putting the squared or trimmed edges against the pins. So I'll press OK there, and that's gone, gone ahead and created the G-code for all 26 of those sheets. And then on the next tab, I can press G-code, and it will show me those individual program numbers. So I've got my short file name turned on, and it's generating sheet one, run one, for each of the first 15 sheets of the white HMR. And then under the white satin, you'll see that we have flip sheet options. So we've got sheet one, run one for pattern number one, but we've got a F there indicating that that is a flipped sheet for the second side of that program. On the patterns tab, once you've created your G-code, there's, there's quite a few unique features to Mosaic that are, I think are quite powerful. Let's say one of the guys in the factory said to you that they'll run in um, sheet number six and they've dropped the the end that's on sheet number six. So they come back to you and they say, that one's the one that got damaged. You could right click on that and say, I'd like to move that to a remake bin. And the software will highlight that that part requires remaking and it places it in a remake bin. So you can go ahead and click on from any sheet, uh, which particular parts require remaking, any particular parts that might've got damaged along the way. You'll see on the patterns here, it's indicating to me which ones require remaking. As I go across now to sheet number 15, I can see that that particular sheet had a big remnant part there, meaning that it was going to store a remnant for me um, to, pos to possibly use later on. It's going to square that off so we didn't end up with a, a strange shaped uh, offcut. I'm going to right click there and I'm going to say I want to remove that remnant. And then I'm going to drag across my remake bin this part, drag it up, right click, and then choose that I want to bump it left and bump it down. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag across the other part, same deal, right click, bump left down, and then that puts that into position. I can still then click in my available space and say that I would like to cut a remnant. And if I would like Mosaic to remember that remnant for the next time I'm optimizing something, I can save that into a library. Uh, you can do that in any area here. So I could say, look, I want that, that to me is big enough as well to, cut, to create a remnant. You can click in each one of these sections and choose to do that. That way you're going to end up with parts that are actually a specific size that you could put back in an offcut rack. Now I've already created the G code for that sheet, but I've added two parts that needed recutting there. So I'm going to press generate G code, calculate, and I'm going to then press the G code button and say, okay. Now it says that the G code was already exists for the previous sheet. Do you want to delete that one? That depends if you've run this sheet. So whether you say yes or no really depends on that. I'm gonna say no in this case. And you'll see that it's come up with an option here to say uh, sheet number 15, run number two. So I know that it's the second run of that. If I haven't run the previous one, I can simply click on it and press save and then overwrite that G code option. At this point, I can press view to view the G code. If I'd like to have a look at the program that's been generated, and if that's something you're familiar with, then you can use this to just ensure that you're outputting the correct information for your machine. Okay, let's get out of there and go back to view all patterns. As these patterns have been cut, you can actually uh, notify Mosaic that they've been cut by clicking on them here. Let's say you've cut the first nine sheets then you can highlight all nine sheets and press mark as complete or as you've been as you cut them you'll you see they'll turn green as you can cut them you can click on each one and press mark as complete we can go to the patterns here and if i view all the patterns you'll see which ones have been cut so we know exactly where we're up to 
Where this is really useful is if you run a separate install of the Mosaic Optimizer called um, CNC Operator at the actual machine on your CNC machine computer. That way the operator has the flexibility and power to do all of this at the machine without having to come back to the person in the office that has designed the project. Moving along from there, we can see obviously our G-code files and we can see label files. If you're using an automatic labeler, Mosaic has the ability for you to uh, choose where you want your labels and move them. So for example, if I had a cutout in the middle of this part, I could move that label and position it somewhere else to make sure that it wasn't going to be accidentally cut off. Now, one of the things that I love most about the Mosaic Optimizer is the ability to actually edit the parts from the pattern view. So even though this, this whole project's been cut, let's actually go to a sheet that hasn't been cut. Let's say we're up to this one. Okay, let's say on this bottom here, we need a, an operation. Let's say it's like a cable cutout. Okay, so we, I can click on the part, right click, go to edit shape, go to operations, choose that I'd like to bore a hole. I can specify the overall size of the hole. So I'm going to say it's a 60 mil diameter and I'm cutting into my whiteboard. So that's 16.5 deep based on my settings. We'll click OK there. Well, first of all, we'll position it. Let's say that it's 50 mil from the left and then 150 in Y and hit OK. So now that particular bottom has an operation that we've added in from the nest view. And then it's just as simple as regenerating my G code to ensure that we're going to cut that hole out. Very useful, especially if the machine operator has access to the CNC operator version of Mosaic. One of the new features recently introduced in version nine is to have a question mark available on almost every page within Mosaic that will open up a PDF with exact instructions about everything relating to the page that you're looking at. You can scroll through that and you can see detailed information about each of those areas. So if you're not too sure what the view remake bin option is, you can see there's a number two indicated there. Then we scroll down and it gives you information about that particular item. That makes it very easy to use Mosaic as I, if I minimize out of the optimizer and go back to my plan view, that particular item is available everywhere. Where it's particularly useful is in the areas that you might not have explored yet about the software. So if I go into a cabinet editor and I want to learn about the shaping page, I can click edit shape and then I can press the question mark and that will show me uh, not only a help doc about the shape editor, with detailed information helping you understand exactly what each of the options mean, but also a link to a video that's going to show a video on YouTube specifically about that area of the software. It's all of these features that make Mosaic very user-friendly and easy to use. The last point I'll make here is that Mosaic has a direct integration with SketchUp. So if you are familiar with SketchUp, you can simply click the SketchUp button and load your job straight into SketchUp. You can choose whether you'd like to have cabinet labels on and off, whether you'd like to see the operations in SketchUp, or if you just want to take the entire project into SketchUp, maybe use SketchUp to add additional functionality and features to, or perhaps you'd like to use SketchUp to link into an external rendering engine, as there's many different plugins available to SketchUp. It's a fantastic piece of software that allows you to really add and build upon what you've done very quickly and easily in Mosaic. So within the SketchUp interface here, I can navigate around and I can use all of the standard SketchUp tools. I can click on every item here. Uh, I could change colors. So if I wanted to apply a specific uh, texture or color to an item, like perhaps if I wanted a brick pattern there, I could use the SketchUp interface to allow me to interact with this. One of my favorite things about SketchUp is that you can use SketchUp to model things like handles or accessories that you might want to display within Mosaic. Here's an example of a handle that I've modeled based on a brand called Buster and Punch. Now it's a brass knurled style handle. So I've modeled that in SketchUp. Now if I go back to Mosaic 
and I go to libraries hardware I've then gone ahead to pools and I've set up a pool called knurled bar pool and I've linked that to my SketchUp model I've given it sizes in this case I've set my size at 300 high okay and then from there I can actually specify then um, what the distance it, it would be to the center of that handle so in this case let's say it's 150 plus however far I'd like the handle to start up or down so I'm going to set that to 190 hit OK I'm then going to go ahead and apply that to my tall cabinets we'll go to wall number two and we'll go to elevation I'm going to double click on this first tall cabinet then I'm going to go across to my info tab I'm going to change my pull selection to the knurled bar handle hit OK and then I'm going to do the same for this particular product here so again we're going to the info tab we change our default setting and choose the new handle so now let's take a closer look at that in 3D to see how that appears. Okay, so we can see that we've got our handles displayed and they're coming up quite nicely. And that's the, that's the beauty of having SketchUp so well integrated into Mosaic is the ability to really customize this to do what you need to do and display exactly what you need to display and at the end of the day win more projects and win more work. Okay so that sums up this presentation thank you for taking the time to watch and if you have any questions please feel free to reach out and get in touch with me. Have a great day.